Hello, Manton. Thank you so much for being here with us today, making time for, for us today. Thanks for having me. Good to talk to you. Great. Look, I have a, a specific question here. Before uh, microblog, I, I just want to know who was Manton before microblog, your background, what did you work on? I, I read your book, but for those who didn't, I, I, I would like to share if you could share with us some of your before microblog live. Sure. <laughs> yeah, and I don't I don't go into too much of that in my book. I'm yeah. I'm impressed. And most people haven't read it. I I was joking with someone the other day about this. Just some people have skimmed a little bit of it, but um, which is totally fine. I'm putting the final edits uh, on it now. So if people waited to read it, that's great. Uh, yeah. I mean, I've always considered myself kind of a Mac developer. I got started. Um, doing Mac development in like the 90s, late 90s, mid 90s. And so I did a bunch of that, worked at a couple different companies, small Mac company, larger sort of startup, bigger company, and um, doing that and then getting into other product development in the Apple ecosystem, iPhone development. And then decided, yeah, I, I had blogged for, for years and I got pulled into like Twitter and big social networks and got frustrated mm -hmm. for various reasons. And um, then everything kind of came together at some point where I decided I wanted to invest more in blogging and doing my own thing. And that's where micro.blog came from. And I've been doing that for the last yeah, seven years or so. Yeah, it's, it's a while. And, and, and you're talking in your book about uh, your blog is something that is very special for you. And so when you say that you were blogging and now you have your blog on micro, you imported everything. So it's the whole story there. Whole story. Yeah. Well, I mean, the whole story that I blogged about, you know, it's, <laughs> there I didn't I I kind of settled into blogging about you know, like things in the tech world, um, you know, social media, blogging, random tech things, Apple things. I also would blog a lot about like art and animation and just things that were like hobbies or things that I was interested uh -huh. in. And then, but I, I kind of, I didn't blog too much about like family and kids and things oh, like I that see. just every once in a while. So I have like a private journal where I keep uh, some of that kind of stuff. So I kind of consider the blog like half my life, maybe, okay. you know, it's like, so it's not the, when you say it's the whole story, it's not the whole story, but it's a big, <laughs> it's a big part of it. <laughs> but it's a whole, my the whole story that you published. Yes. Oh, yes, uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, so okay. I started the blog, I think, 2002, 2003. Okay. And I was at South by Southwest, a conference here in Austin. And it was small back then. It wasn't quite as big as it is now. And it was, there was just a lot of excitement, people blogging, people talking about design. You know, CSS was kind of just getting, yeah. getting started, it felt like. And... It was just, it was, I don't know, it was an exciting time, people sharing what they were doing. And I started the blog and I've just kept it ever since. I, I started it on a software called Radio Userland, which okay. was one of Dave Weiner's products. And it was really interesting because it was like, it was kind of web-based software, but it ran on your computer. Mm -hmm. And it had some neat little, uh, it, had some, it has an interesting design and it had some things that were kind of, foreshadowing podcasting and and oh. kind of other features that now we kind of take for granted so i used that for a bit i mo used uh, movable type uh for a little while after that and then i used wordpress and then i used micro.blog and and each step along the way i imported all my previous oh posts. that's good yeah yeah when i read that i, I felt sad because i started uh, my 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 own line live let's call it that uh i started blogging too i i think it was a B2 evolution, something like that. I think that was mm -hmm. the, the, the platform I used. But when I read your, that on your book, I said, oh, I don't have anything. And mm -hmm. I the other day I went to the Wayback Machine and I could find some snippets of it. And I was so happy and going back to things that I wrote back then. Mm -hmm. At least it's there. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Some of, yeah. some of it I'm importing to microblog, but it's going to take forever so but i'm doing it every mm -hmm. i don't know every week every month i do something mm -hmm. and import it to to, to microblog yeah i always tell people uh, I, was, I always tell people like always export your data always have a copy yeah. and that's in micro.blog that's why we have like importing from you know a dozen different places exporting in different formats because 
you really you don't really appreciate it until later when you need that yes. and you want to look back on it so I, I i mean everything when you get older everything that you did becomes more important and i'm trying to mm -hmm. tell, tell tell my kids now they're not really kids they're adults now but mm -hmm. i'm trying i'm still trying write down even if it's only for you write down take pictures because i guess when we get older going back to those memories is so comfortable mm -hmm. it's so it's so yeah. nice it's so it's amazing absolutely so, i love that yeah what is micro dot blog for people who don't know what that is please let us know explain to us what is that yeah, it's a kind of combination of blogging platform and social network. So we have kind of community features where you can follow people, um, discover new people, reply to people, uh, but it's all built on open standards. And we also host blogs for people. So that's a core part. That's really the core part of the business is if you'd like to pay $5 a month, we'll host your blog. And we have a whole bunch of features around blog hosting, you know, posting photos and then all sorts of extra things that are sort of off to the side uh, that, that make blogging easier or that kind of encourage people to put things on their blog. So, you know, yeah, what type what you had for breakfast, but also <laughs> photos, videos, you know, books you're reading, you know, all, all sorts of things. And um, so that's the core part of it. It's sort of mm -hmm. those two things. And uh, we've, fallen into this um, this kind of approach of, you know, you post everything to your blog, but you still may want to connect to people outside of micro.blog on different social networks. And so we have a whole range of options for like cross posting automatically to whether it's Mastodon or, mm -hmm. you know, Tumblr or Medium or LinkedIn or something else. And so that's a that's a big part of it, too. A lot of people appreciate that. Yeah, that was one of my questions. What, uh you choose, uh, I know that you have more connections today, but you choose the Activity Pub protocol. Mm -hmm. And although I read the book, I was fixated on this idea of Activity Pub all the, all the time. I was not thinking about the blog part. Mm -hmm. But I would like to know why did you choose it? Because it was a, an open standard? Because you, you, you talk about being, having a blog and also a, so you, you figure out that you needed a blog and a social media. So mm -hmm. why, why start with Activity Pub? Back then it was. Mm -hmm. Today is not popular, popular, but back then it is, was much nicher than it is today. So why, why, mm -hmm. why that? Yeah, mostly because, um, so when we launched micro.blog, Activity Pub was barely, it was, I can't even remember when it was actually formalized as a W3C recommendation. Mastodon and micro.blog sort of started around the same time. Oh, okay. But Ma Mastodon didn't support Activity Pub at launch though it oh i didn't know that no yeah it was like oh status it was like a little bit of a it was cobbled together from a few different standards and then they made the switch because activity pub was still kind of up and coming and then they made the switch and pretty seamlessly they were able to sort of transition everyone to activity pub um and so that that was kind of impressive and um i decided to start with limited activity pub support around that time so that people could, yeah, so people on Mastodon could follow micro.blog people. Micro.blog people could follow people on Mastodon. I mean, it's very powerful to be able to connect completely uh -huh. different networks like that. And then <laughs> when Twitter sort of started struggling uh, over the last couple of years, and there was just a huge number of people looking for other options, we really improved our activity pub support. So it's a lot better now. And, you know, when I post to my blog, it goes out with activity pub and like someone on mastodon might think i'm using mastodon too uh -huh. like they, it's just seamless yeah. they just they can see my post they can reply i can reply back it's great um so yeah it's really powerful and now here we are with threads from meta rolling yeah. out with a limit you know they, they they it's kind of limited activity pub support but they have a roadmap of of kind of finishing out the different features they support so already, you know, being able to follow someone on uh, someone that's on uses threads, from, follow them yeah. from micro.blog, it's really, I, yeah. it's great. I, yeah, I, I was thinking to, about, yeah, I was thinking about that. It's so crazy because I'm <laughs> there in the microblog feed. I'm following someone that has a Mastodon account, but it's from Flipboard, mm -hmm. and then 
I can follow someone from Threads. That is, it's so crazy. It's so, yeah. it's so, it's amazing. It's, it's so, it's out of this world. I, 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 it's a shame that not a lot of people understand that how powerful yeah. that is. It is powerful. I mean, I don't blame people for not understanding though. It is confusing. Like it, it, uh, the activity pub, it, it's a little bit, it takes a little while to get used to the idea mm -hmm. of these different services talking to each other, but also at a technical level, activity pub is, I, I found it quite confusing implementing it. <laughs> There's a lot of different, cause it's kind of a, it's kind of like a suite of protocol. It's not just one thing. Oh. And you, you really, if someone is building something that supports activity pub, you can't just read the specification and say, okay, I'm going to, I support it now. You really have to, you know, you have to test with Mastodon because Ma Mastodon maybe has some slightly, oh. slightly different way of supporting it. So it, it can get quite complicated. So uh, I, I think one of the tasks that we have this year, and I say we like not just Microsoft blog, but threads and Mastodon, everybody is like making this easier and more approachable mm -hmm. um, because Right now, it is easier to just create a TikTok account and just pretend like nothing yeah. else exists. Yeah. Um, but it should be just as easy to you know start a blog and connect to different networks. Yeah. Recently, Mastodon added. It's a while now. A, a little box showing you the you, if you click, it shows you the username and explains what it is. I, I thought that was mm -hmm. a, a very, very interesting idea. I, I like mm -hmm. that. It it, yeah. it it helps people understand what 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 it is. I have this fascination when we talk about ideas and creation because we have the idea and then we have the final product and often on movies they show this i have this idea and then suddenly there is a product but what happened there in the middle what did you did you have this click moment do you have those napkins with <laughs> writing writings how 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 did it became a, a product from this idea that you have yeah, that's a great question. It's not, yeah, it's not, uh, you know, just snap your fingers and all of a sudden it's a fully <laughs> formed idea. And in fact, some of the things that I love the most about Micro.blog weren't there at the beginning or weren't, they weren't really fully formed as ideas, even major things like what are we going to host for mm -hmm. people? Um, the very, very first like prototype of Micro.blog, it was more, I mean, it, it was, Basically, it was part of what it is today, but it also focused a lot on connecting different blogs together wherever they were hosted. Okay. And we still support that. So like, if you want to use WordPress, you can still go on a micro.blog and people can follow your WordPress blog and reply directly in micro.blog. And, and that's one of the, I think, unique strengths of micro.blog is that we don't just support ActivityPub, but we also support like some of the indie web protocols like Web Mentions. So you can follow blogs, not just activity pub uh people and and i, I want to do more of that and like connecting to blue sky is another mm -hmm. one so I, i'm hoping micro.blog becomes even more kind of glue that can that can kind of fit your social network presence all together with different blogs um but uh, yeah at the beginning it, it was a lot about people use different blogging software how can we connect that into like a twitter like timeline feed so mm -hmm. we're pulling rss feeds which of course we still do we're pulling it all together, making it kind of like a nice experience. And uh, I didn't even, like at the beginning, I didn't even know, like, should we host photos for people? Like, that sounds uh -huh. difficult. Uh, you yeah. know, it's like, like, that sounds <laughs> like it'd be a major storage, you know, and bandwidth issue. And of course we did, and I'm glad we did, because photos yeah, are such a huge part. Great, yeah. yeah. And right now, like, as we're talking, we're doing a photo challenge where people, can, yeah. it's like every day there's a prompt where people can like, kind of get inspired to post something and so yeah without photos like i it would be completely different so <laughs> li things like that um they're not little decisions but they're just like things that i didn't have sort of plotted out completely and it just sort of starts to take shape and so but uh, you you kept thinking about it writing mm -hmm. down how, how did the process evolve how how, how, mm -hmm. how did it happen yeah, just kept thinking. I mean, I, I would think about it all the time. I was obsessed with, <laughs> with this. <laughs> um, so, it, yeah, every free moment it felt like I was thinking about what, what to do, how to shape the product. Uh -huh. And then I, I did, I launched the Kickstarter for my yeah, I... blog. And it, uh, that, I got a lot of great feedback from that. And it was interesting because, like, a lot of people backed the Kickstarter not really understanding what uh -huh. it was going to be. Uh, just they were like, yeah, you know, I'll back this for five dollars or you know ten dollars, and just see what happens. And 
you know, maybe Micro.blog didn't turn out exactly how they envisioned, or for some people it was even better. And but hearing that feedback from people and sort of shaping the direction was super helpful. And then, yeah, I don't know, I guess just chipping away. I mean, yeah, it's been seven years about. Um, and uh, if you look at what it was at the beginning and what it was now, it's, you know, a hundred times better, more powerful, many, many more features, more than a hundred times as many features. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff packed in there. And I don't think I could have gone from that beginning idea to where it is now all at once. It's like it takes iterating on it and, you know, getting feedback, mm -hmm. adding one one feature that leads to another feature and just letting it letting it evolve sort okay. of from there. But but at the same time, like there was that core idea of like more people should post to their blog. Most more people should have their own domain name. More people should control their identity that way. We shouldn't be as reliant on big social networks and getting like approval to build an app. Mm -hmm. So like I wanted there to be, you know, you'd be able to build an app for almost anything with micro.blog. I don't need to approve it. You know, you can just kind of run uh -huh. it with the API and, and, and that's one of the powerful things about, you know, open web standards. So that, that core part of it, which is something I write about in the book a lot has guided everything. So like, if we think about some feature that we want to work on, I'm always thinking about like, does this actually fit? the vision or is this taking us off in a, on a so you had this way. core core idea and then you started uh creating on top of that while you mm -hmm. you, you were going mm -hmm. yeah okay yeah like i, I mean i kind of had the, the basic idea of what i thought it would be i built that i prototyped that and i got some feedback and i actually the first prototype um it, before i even had the name micro.blog i wasn't sure I, I went back and forth a little bit about uh, what it should be called and uh, automatic uh, got the rights to to deploy uh, the the top level domain dot blog and when they did that I thought oh, this is really interesting I'll try to get micro dot blog because it seems like oh, it just seems yeah. like a fun neat domain name and when I and I and when I got that because they had like a, a kind of like an auction period where you had to like apply for it or oh. whatever. And so when I was approved to, to, for that, I was probably the only one because actually it was kind of expensive. <laughs> um, I was probably the only one that tried to get it. When I got that, I was like, this, this, this fits. Like, I'm going to name it this. I'm going to launch the Kickstarter. And then the prototype that I built, I just kind of renamed it and just continued to improve it. So What I was the I was name thinking, before? The, 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 the original name was snippets.today. Um, it's a good yeah, name too. Yeah. yeah. But, but microblog is it's better. more direct. Yeah. Better. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because I was thinking about calling like these little microblog post snippets, like uh -huh. just like little bits. Yeah, of I text. like that. Yeah. So, I I'm happy the way it turned out. I don't I don't mm -hmm. I don't I don't love that name anymore. <laughs> but you know, just <laughs> experimenting and building something, um, it was it was fine. And then yeah, and then it just evolved from there. I got feedback, cool. continue to improve it, and then using it myself too. Because at the time. I mentioned the blogging platforms I'd gone through. I was using WordPress at the time. Mm -hmm. And so I connected my WordPress blog to micro.blog. And I added features like in the oh. micro.blog app, you can post directly to WordPress from the micro.blog app. But at some point, fairly early on, uh, and I'm sure I blogged about this, I, I decided I need to use this fully. So I needed to migrate from WordPress to micro.blog so that I'm using it day to day, the hosting part. And, uh, and that was really useful too, because then yes. of course I, I needed a bunch of features <laughs> myself. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that's important. But yeah, the, the only thing I don't like about the name micro.blog is that maybe maybe it was me, but the first time I, I heard about it, I thought, okay, I, I would also like to write long posts mm -hmm. and it, it feels like it's not possible. And I know that you, are, you love micro posts but mm. I don't know. I, it, for me, it felt like I'm not gonna use this because I want mm. <laughs> I want to create long longer posts. And just to make yeah. clear to everyone, it's possible you can it is possible write yeah. giant posts there. Yes. <laughs> no, it's a great point. I mean, I and I think that gets back to ex the expectations too, like of the Kickstarter of like, what is this really gonna be, and does it meet? And I, there's a lot of people that know about Micro.blog. They have absolutely no idea that it's a full blogging platform that has long posts, you know, categories, you know, you know, all the templates, like it's all under the hood. It's all backed with Hugo, which is a really nice, uh, you know, fast 
static site uh -huh. blog host uh, rendering system so you could completely customize it and control it there's plugins like i i'm there's a whole bunch of stuff underneath um my yeah. blog that is really powerful and most people don't know because yeah they just assume it's kind of like a twitter yeah kind of it's twitter really thing. powerful and there there is all the community the plugins it's 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 great i i, I really love it i i love that i I migrated everything to 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 microblog. Thank you. I I, I have two two quick requests. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> you know I'm not a developer, so everything for me is simple. <laughs> Just ask. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, one thing I I, I I I I I keep hidden in my in my blog is the archive list because it's too long, and Ooh. also my archive I have too many categories, so Ooh. the list of categories. It's almost I don't know two one and a half page uh, web page, yeah. so I, I I thought maybe have pagination there and also mm -hmm. let us use the the categories like like before they had this cloud of tags maybe put them on the horizontal with common separated I don't know mm -hmm. maybe to to shrink them so that's why I don't I, I love that page but I don't show it because it's mm. it's kind of weird the way yeah. because the way i have all those categories and it's, mm -hmm. it's strange so I mean, yeah that, th that would make it a little bit more comfortable to open and and see the the so it's so easy that's a good, right? that's a good it's feedback. really easy yeah you see well so i thought <laughs> no i i completely hear and i i don't well my cat my archivage is huge right it's yeah, like 20 years yeah. of posts but you don't um, have too many categories I, no i don't i yeah. just have like a dozen yeah. and so the um uh, and so it's, so I don't really, but, but, but people have customized theirs to lay mm -hmm. out the categories differently. And I kind of thought that maybe someone would write a plugin that changed yeah, the Yeah, I looked for page, it. I didn't find no, any. We probably need to, we probably need to add that as a, as, a, yeah. as either our own plugin or as a feature. Cause yeah, as your blog gets bigger, it really becomes unmanageable. So yeah. I mean, I, even on my blog, I, I would love to have the category, the uh, archive page broken out like by year maybe yeah that's um, good too yeah. or something so it's more structured so no that's a good feedback yeah, yeah we should do something like that it's the kind of thing when you start you don't really it doesn't matter but yeah if you as you have years and years of posts mm -hmm. it starts to be kind of and and, and happen it the same happens to the pictures page because that's not i'm not mm -hmm. turning off not not hid, mm -hmm. hiding it but the, the your pages takes a while yeah. to to load <laughs> that's true no yeah. you're right we should have a, a yeah. Yeah, either pagination or yeah. uh, that's probably for the pictures page. That's probably the way to do it. Is just yeah. like not load everything all at once when you have thousands of photos. Yeah, yeah. but but I love the pictures page. I, it's it's so it's so cool. It's uh, I, I, I and I love that you guys made it that so that if I add a picture in the past, if I create a post in the past, it goes to the mm -hmm. the right position in, mm -hmm. in, in the timeline. That's great because. And that that means that I can import my old pictures mm -hmm. and put the pictures that in the same day that they yeah. were taken. That that's great. Yeah. No. That's uh, yeah. I love doing that. Um, I have. It's interesting because uh, you know we had an Instagram import feature in the Mac app, and I just uh, someone was just giving me feedback uh, a few days ago actually that I think it stopped working because Instagram's always changing yeah, there. I guess I their, read that too. Yeah. Yeah. So like we need to we need to work on improving that to update to the latest uh, Instagram format. Um, but yeah, taking old photos it's from great. somewhere else and then having them all in one place on your blog, I think is great. Okay, talking about, you talked a little bit about it, but this is another word that people don't, a lot of people don't understand in the web. And mm -hmm. I, I would like you to explain for people that who, who don't know what that is, what is mm -hmm. in the web, what is this movement? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, at the core, it's really just the idea, you know, independent web, the idea that we have our own websites, that we think about like where our posts are going, and we don't just post like on Facebook. And I mean, at, at its simplest, that's really it. Yeah, mm -hmm. Having your own website. And then people do get a little bit tripped up because there are a lot of things you can do um, with indie web uh, protocols with different formats and but it, it's if people are if people look at the indie web website 
and they get kind of overwhelmed like oh do i need to support you know all these mm -hmm. things or no just the basic idea is have your own website and you know like one of their principles is posse which is p-o-s-s-e -S -S -E, post to your own site syndicate mm -hmm. elsewhere uh, in microdotblog we just call that cross posting but it, it's you know you post your own blog and then you send a copy out to everyone you know, else whatever you want yeah wherever you want and yeah. and and so like that that's the core part of the indie web is just thinking about having your own website um and then there's a, yeah there's like a range of like different apis um some of them are similar to activity activity pub you know different ways of connecting blogs together mm -hmm. and um it's a it's a great community uh, you know developers and writers and just um a, a just very you know kind of diverse mix of people i think and every once in a while they'll get together in person so oh. we've had a few um here in austin we've done a few of the indie web camps where people get together you know for two days and just have kind of ad hoc sessions talk about this kind of stuff or just kind of play around on their website you know maybe it's just, maybe it's, so a developer might want to add a feature but someone <laughs> else might just want to like customize the archive page like uh -huh. you mentioned you know like that's like it's that's like an indie web task oh. for the day you know it's like <laughs> i just want to make my archive page better like who can help me get, get that working and there's a i think the last principle is have fun and after, yeah. <laughs> i love I, that's the best one <laughs> because having a blog is having fun you're you're posting and writing mm -hmm. things it's 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 yeah i think fun. so yeah and it's it's it, it uh there's something about like when you post to like Facebook or Twitter or whatever, like everybody's profile looks the same, right? Yeah. I mean, you can customize the background, you know, the, the image or whatever, but like it's all basically the same. Millions and like billions of people, like your presence on the internet looks the same. And with your own blog, you can have fun, you can experiment, you can change the colors, you can mm -hmm. change the theme, you can, you know, you can, you can make it your own. And yeah. I, I think that like being able to personalize it, I think is really, really. Yeah, cool. I even try to create the. The common separated values for the categories, but I'm not a developer. I even asked ChatGPT, and it made a oh, mess yeah. on my blog. <laughs> oh no! So I said, "No, yeah. it's okay because I just deleted the the, the, yeah. the, the But I I tried. <laughs> yeah. But I, I don't I don't know how to do that. That's not my my skill. <laughs> yeah, we need. I mean, people are great, like on our help forums, like uh, helping out with. But there is, it, there is a there is like a kind of a learning curve, like. The very basics, and then all of a sudden you're, you know, you're jumping into like, oh, I need to, yeah, you know, change it, all a, this. It, yeah. It, yeah, so we need to make some of that easier. Yeah, more I, plugins. I, I learn basic on my Apple IIe. Mm -hmm. I know basic HTML, but that's yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that can get you pretty far. I mean, yeah, yeah, I, I, I can do some yeah. things, but I cannot create my 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 personalized <laughs> archive yeah. page. Uh, okay. Um, and talking about protocols, I have this question for you. I, I noticed on your posts that you are getting more and more in love with uh, Blue Sky. Mm -hmm. And this is more uh, uh, a question, a philosophical question. Don't you think that the AT protocol will create kind of a distraction now that ActivityPub is any more steam what mm -hmm. do you think about that that duality having a new protocol i know that there are others but this are mm -hmm. looks like this this ones are the most popular right now yeah it it might um I, i've definitely heard that from folks in the activity pub and mastodon community are they a little bit defensive about oh we you know what are you doing over there in blue sky <laughs> lands like we've got like we're, we're we've got everything settled but you know Threads is using ActivityPub, you yeah. know, all these other servers, Microsoft is using ActivityPub. Why are you creating something new? Um, I think it's okay, basically. Mm -hmm. I, I think it'll it'll shake out fine because there are limitations in ActivityPub, first of okay. all. Like, I, I have little gripes and things that I would have maybe done differently. And so having sort of competition, having something different, I think will actually make ActivityPub better. Okay. Um, because I think you know, both communities can like draw ideas and inspiration. Um, so like one of the things in Blue Sky that I really liked is the identities are all domain names. Yeah, I love um, that. Which, yeah, and I, I mean, that's something that I believe in with Microdotblog. It's like you have your own domain name. Um, 
and then you know in the Mastodon world you can kind of have your own domain name but the handles are all like username at domain name and it really it's it's more about the the server that you choose so mm -hmm. mastodon.social you know has you know millions of people or whatever uh hundreds of thousands at least i haven't looked recently how much they actually but have, but, but is that it, is that huge. that's a mastodon thing right because that's a ma yeah. you are activity you're using activity pub and mm -hmm. i can use my own domain so it's more mm -hmm. a mastodon than a, an activity pub thing well yeah that gets to a little bit to the, the what i mentioned about like activity pub really being a couple different things okay and activity pub itself never really had anything for that username oh. you know at domain um but there's a separate protocol called webfinger which is used to look up different uh usernames and and mastodon uses that and so part of the, actually the the process in the in the kind of standards community right now is formalizing some of this so that when we talk about activity pub everybody's on the same page okay. about how this stuff works so so it didn't i guess the, I, I put it this way it didn't need to be that username at domain oh, name okay. kind of style but now that we've settled on it, it we're kind of stuck with it <laughs> to, to an extent <laughs> um but um and, it's but weird. So I, that, it's kind of yeah. weird the two at symbols it's kind of it, it's strange. a little and it looks like an email address but it's not an email yeah, address yeah. and like for me uh, i think everybody should have just their own identity and so mm -hmm. if your identity is at someone else's server then if you want to move you can move you know and to mastodon's credit you know there's you can migrate accounts between servers but your posts don't get migrated um so there's some drawbacks and so okay. Uh, Blue, Blue Sky, I think they're doing two interesting things. One is sort of how identity works and how um, your content is completely portable. Uh, if you need to host it somewhere else, like nothing breaks, nothing changes. Um, and also they're doing some interesting things with moderation. Um, they have uh, they have a post called Composable Mar Moderation where they talk about like different ways of um, – kind of uh, I can't explain it well like <laughs> people should read the post but different ways of you know labeling posts and, and filtering posts and and like having the community help um, think about moderation at, at, at different levels uh -huh. so I, I'm not doing it justice but th so they're they're doing they're they're thinking about things in a slightly different way which I think will help okay. Mastodon also and so I, I think it's okay I don't think it's a I don't think it's gonna be a huge distraction but you think there's a space um, for both for example, let's say a blue blue sky grows and and there is mm -hmm. many servers and I know that from a micro dot blog user point of view it's mm -hmm. okay because we can just post there and that's gonna be cross post mm -hmm. everywhere. But I'm more I'm talking more about the two protocols coexisting mm -hmm. as huge protocols, not not yeah. because today is a activity pub is much bigger than than mm -hmm. than, than the ad protocol. But right. let's imagine a day where both of them are yeah. so big that I don't know. It's a yeah, it's a great it's a great question. Um, I don't know is the okay. is sort of the answer. I and I think with with micro dot blog some things we're really opinionated about apis i'm trying not to be very opinionated about i i think um uh, and it's actually i mean it's kind of a advantage to micro blog if it, if it can work with both and i'll yeah. just let i'll let things sort out where they are but there it, it you know it we'll, we'll see we'll see what okay. happens for, for now i think it's so early that i think it's okay mm -hmm. to experiment um, mm -hmm. Because when when we're talking about like Blue Sky, they they've grown a lot. I mean, they have like I don't know five or six million people, so it's not small. Um, and but but it's still very early compared to like the billion people mm -hmm. that you know <laughs> are on Facebook. So uh, I think there's time for things, and also there's attempts to bridge the protocols. Um, there's yeah, a project. I saw that. There's a yeah. project. Yeah, it's yeah. Cool. Br Bridgy is a is a tool that has been around in the IndieWeb community for a while, and he's been working on adding support. And it's it's quite interesting because there was a lot of pu pushback in the Mastodon community uh -huh. that yeah, people were like, I don't want my posts, um, <laughs> you know, bridged to another network. And so it, it, a little bit of controversy there. I, I I guess another way I think about it is what's like the open web itself, like the social web. Like that's the important thing. Mm -hmm. So it's even it's kind of at a, a higher level even than Activity Pub. It's like we need we have websites, we have blogs, we have things that can talk to each other. Uh, we don't want to get too 
focused on like one protocol that like I don't know how I don't know how explain this exactly, but like the web itself can do all these yeah, things. Yeah, I, I think about. I think I yeah. understand what you're saying. Uh, uh, I don't understand this fight too because <laughs> what's the point? <laughs> yeah. Why? Why? I I I lo I like that I can follow someone from Threads. I have all the benefits mm -hmm. of not having publicity of not having algorithm following me and i can read what that person is saying mm -hmm. what, what yeah. what's the harm of that <laughs> yeah so, i don't know it's great <laughs> yeah i i can i can i can take advantage of being able to read that without all the problems that mm -hmm. i would have being on threads so what's right. the, what's the harm of that <laughs> i think it's good i mean if you had asked me years ago like if facebook would adopt an open yeah, protocol i'd be like this is great this is the best <laughs> thing ever this is never going to happen but mm -hmm. yeah i think there's there's definitely uh, some distrust in the mastodon community especially which i totally get you know uh -huh. of, of of big big platforms sure and yeah. also i think there's a there's a little bit of a culture there of um kind of trying to protect their users from the big scary internet mm -hmm. and yeah. so you know like uh, i'm I don't mean to belittle it, but like, cause there is real, there's harassment, there's oh, real yes, problems. Yes, yes. Um, and so some people maybe want protected accounts, they don't. And so I think that instinct, which I totally understand, um, sometimes it maybe goes a little too far where like uh, you're, you're working against the open web a mm -hmm. little bit. Uh, because at the end of the day, I mean, if you post to a public Mastodon account, you, you're not, you know you're on the internet i mean yeah, you're, you're, your public. stuff's on your stuff is on the web so there should be we need to solve these issues like at the moderation level mm -hmm. um you know blocking accounts muting accounts having filters um banning bad you know users that's that is sort of the solution not banning like an, a complete yeah you know like yeah i, I like that network. idea of it's something that I, I it took it took me a while to understand to the community moderation because mm -hmm. if you if you don't want some some server or don't want some actors from some servers, you can block that. And I love that idea of this. Each community has its own rules, and I can mm -hmm. I can go to a community that I, I feel more comfortable on. Yeah. So I, I, I think yeah. that's that's great. No, I think that's one of the best things that Mastodon has brought is awareness of the idea of smaller communities and smaller networks. Because like one of the problems, and I write about this in my book so much, is that when you have a giant network that has millions and millions of people, like there's some problems that are just going to happen when mm -hmm. you bring those many people together. And it's, it's a challenge. How do you moderate? How do you stay on top of that? Where if you have smaller communities where it might just be like a volunteer that is, you know, mm -hmm. um, kind of keeping an eye on things, you have a little more control and that. And so if we can get to smaller communities and more of them, smaller networks and more of them, I think that is the, the way to go. Sure. And then, yeah, if you if you have a community that feels strongly enough that they don't want to federate with threads, then that's their choice. I mean, you know, that that's totally their choice. But if you have a huge, like Mastodon, mm -hmm. that social, if you have like millions of people, you can't really block threads. You can't yeah. really cut yourself off because that's a big part of the social web. Now. Yeah, and, and there will be a community that will block threads so the person can move to that community if that person doesn't want mm -hmm. to. I, I think that idea yeah. of communities is so great because there are so many possibilities I can move to to another community and and try mm -hmm. to be happy there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And again, if you have your own identity, you know, yeah, makes that's, the, none makes of that it, is a problem. <laughs> yeah, it's easier to move things around. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even just going back to what I said about, you know, my blog, you know, I've used three or four different blogging platforms and being able to move all my posts and all my photos each time. It's just really, it's just really nice to mm -hmm. have that sort of permanence for those mm -hmm. things. And not everybody cares about that. Some people want it to be kind of fleeting and they post something and it disappears. Yeah, that's fine. But, uh, you know, for me, I like to keep that stuff yeah. around. Now I'm keeping the posts on my computer first and then go to the web. So I, I learned my lesson here. <laughs> it's not going <laughs> to happen again. Uh, I, I want to ask you a little bit about the company itself, because you talked about uh, app.net on your book. It, mm -hmm. it, it, I, I paid for that service. I used that mm -hmm. service. I, 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 it was really cool. But you, you talked uh, about the problems, the financial problems. It was hard mm -hmm. to, to, to. And you have one of the fairest prices in, 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 in you have Thanks. a great you 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 were not 
telling all the truth there. You have a great product. You have Thank many, you. <laughs> many, many features. People should should try it. So how 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 are you being able to keep this alive? How is your team, uh, the company structure? Of course, feel free to talk about about what you what you feel free to talk mm -hmm. about. Yeah, I mean we're still small and like, but I feel like we've grown steadily every year, and that's the way to the way to do it is just uh -huh. kind of slowly grow. So it's really me and then, you know, a couple people that are sort of part time, you know, mm -hmm. helping out. Like we're not successful enough where we can have a team of like it would be great to have like five full time people, mm -hmm. ten full time people. Not quite there yet. Okay. But uh it, you know, it's it started it started with the Kickstarter and just bootstrapped with, you know, just subscriptions. And I, I think that I'm in this kind of for the long haul, like I'm committed to working on it for many, many years. And so growing slowly and then being mm -hmm. able to hire more people, I think that's the way to go. I was just listening to uh, a talk that Cable Sasser gave at um, the game developer conference, uh, Panic, he's, his company Panic uh -huh. does Mac software and the Playdate little game, uh, game console device handheld thing. And um, which is a lot of fun. I have one of them. And he talked about like he, he, he tried to coin this term slow biz, like slow. I like that. Like guys like show business, slow biz. I like, like that. slow business, you know, that like grows slowly over, you know, mm. 20 years and mm -hmm. is successful and profitable. And so that's kind of my approach to like just mm -hmm. make users happy, make the product better, uh, charge a fair price um, and just keep growing from there. Um, and with, with app.net, I mean, they had a crowdfunding thing that was really successful. They did have some investment, I think, before that, maybe after that too. Um, but they also had a lot of costs, like they had mm -hmm. several, you know, full-time employees. Um, um, and I, and I think that they're, they're the, they, they never really settled on a business model that worked because I think, it's a tough sell to say, you know, we have something that's that's like Twitter. There's a better API, and it's paid, but that's that's kind of it. Yeah. And like people are were excited about it, but then like when not all their friends joined, mm -hmm. some of them started fading away. So what happened with App.net is it it I think it was a nice success early on, but then when it start when people slowly started slipping away. It would it just kind of slowly lost users lost users and it wasn't valuable enough without the users so there's yeah. that network network effect where it's like you, you need if you have a social network you need other users um for it to be valuable and when you start losing users it, it sort of it, it just starts going badly slowly and with micro.blog the way i've approached that is that micro.blog i think is useful if you're the only user mm -hmm. on the platform. So you have your blog, you have your own domain name, people can follow you. It's worth paying just for that. Mm -hmm. So I, I, it's it's better if Microsoft has thousands and thousands of people, but it's not critical. And so I, I think that that helps insulate us a little bit from some of the problems that App.net ran into. Yeah, that's a good point. So. There's value even if I don't have friends there. I think that's the that's right. the exactly that's the, that's the that's the lesson because yeah, I yep. remember that people you started leaving the platform and it was a great platform. I remember they yeah, had this great. app for pictures and it would integrate mm -hmm. it it was kind of what Activity Pub is, but in mm -hmm. centralized, created by them. It was yeah. it was it was a, a pretty nice, pretty nice yeah. uh, experience. I loved I, it. I, I loved it. I too. think yeah, I, I think they had a lot of really great ideas. Their API was excellent and a lot of neat things built built on it, yeah. yeah. I would like to talk a little bit about uh, cross-posting because you mentioned that before, and that was something that I was kind of not happy with. I, I like mm. the idea of having my own space, but I, I, I felt that that would create confusion, a little mess. Mm. And mm -hmm. I think and I think when you release that Blue Sky integration that mm. shows the post, let me just try to explain that because people, mm -hmm. some people don't know that. So if I cross post to Blue Sky and someone reply to me there, that mm -hmm. re that reply will appear in my microblog uh, yeah. comments, in my microblog yep. uh, 
post. That's great. So I think that was the click moment for me. I said, okay, now I kind of get this because it doesn't matter if where I post, if I have this space. Although I knew all that, theoretically speaking, I think I only felt it when I saw that. Mm. <laughs> I know I don't know if you understand what I mm -hmm. mean here. Yeah. I, I, it was yeah. like, okay, now I get this. I can really pose here and cross post. But mm -hmm. when I read your book, you, I felt you were kind of on the fence there too about cross posting. <laughs> yeah. And then now you are fully in cross posting. So I, I would like to mm. learn a little bit about your thoughts and, and uh, listen to your thoughts on that. Yeah, it's and it's the kind of thing that doesn't it, it may not work for everybody. Uh -huh. You know, um, I, I like the idea of posting to, to my blog first and then kind of having it go out to a couple different places just so I don't need to think about it. I don't need to like copy and paste the mm -hmm. text. And um, so it, it's useful to stay connected with people in other networks. In, in terms of like the mixed feelings, I think there is I, I think a lot of people or some people are resistant to the they, they'll worry that their followers will see the post, you know, multiple times. And maybe mm -hmm. that's confusing or they're worried about just making sense of the replies from different networks and the what you described where we added the ability to not just send the post to blue sky but also get a reply back and then you can reply back to that all from within micro.blog i think is really uh it's just really useful because then you can have one place where you're checking you know you're checking micro.blog and you're seeing your mentions there and maybe every once in a while you jump in to, you know, Blue Sky or Mastodon mm -hmm. or somewhere else, but you don't have to be checking all the time. Yeah, I think that's really powerful. Um, but everybody, I, everybody has a different approach. Like some people want, you know, just to have one presence and like, you know, people on Mastodon follow their Microdot blog directly. Some people want to cross post to a separate Mastodon server because they want to be connected to that community. I don't think we. I think we should have a few different options mm -hmm. so people can kind of juggle. Yeah, I, yeah, I started. I started putting titles everywhere so that people would mm -hmm. come back to my blog. They had to click okay. on, on the on mm -hmm. the. But then I, yeah. I, that doesn't make a lot of. Th now I'm testing yeah. micro posts, so I'm I'm still yeah. not. I don't I, I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I'm I, okay. I'm ta I'm testing it. But now that yeah. you mentioned the uh, activity, but would it be technically possible to do the same thing on Mastodon? The what you did on, on Blue Sky, yeah. would it be possible to? It would be possible. We don't do that right now, um, because I thought that people would want. But I guess the way I do it is I don't use a separate Mastodon account. Mm -hmm. I have a couple for testing, but. If you follow me, you're following the micro.blog mm -hmm. account from Mastodon. And so when you reply, I get it in micro.blog because yeah. of ActivityPub. Um, so what you're talking about where we, we where if you cross post to a Mastodon account, yeah. and this, this is a problem for people listening, this may sound really confusing, <laughs> like how you need a little diagram to understand <laughs> it. But if you cross post, which is like make a copy of the post to Mastodon, and someone replies, you currently would have to go to that Mastodon server to see the reply. Yes, yes. And yeah, we should probably add that so that it's more seamless. Oh, I'm thinking about that. that that's kind of an inception, right? <laughs> an activity yeah. pub inside an activity pub. Yeah. Yeah, because one of the things, I'm not worried about uh, publishing everywhere and people seeing multiple times. I'm more worried about, I'm going to leave a lot of people without answers. Because mm -hmm. I don't go to threads a lot. I don't go to Twitter a lot. I, I right. go to Mastodon a lot, but the mm -hmm. LinkedIn, I never go to LinkedIn. So, I, mm -hmm. so I'm leaving a lot of people that uh, replied uh, without mm -hmm. any answer. And I, and I feel bad mm -hmm. about that. So that's my only concern about, about that situation. But mm -hmm. I understand that it's, it's, it's not possible mm -hmm. to do everything. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> no, that's a good point, though. Yeah, because when you're sending a copy to another network, you're kind of you're putting your foot over there, you know, yeah. you have a foot in the door. You're saying like, I'm here. And then if you don't, and people don't know that reply, you're cross post posting. Probably not. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. They, they think you are just posting there. So it's, it's weird. Yep. <laughs> no, that's, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'm going to let you go. But I, before that, I want to know what, uh, if you're still asleep, because mm -hmm. 
you do a lot you keep posting and you keep working every other day there's a new feature that comes from nowhere <laughs> first if you are still sleeping and then i would like to know you to talk a little bit i i heard i heard uh, you talk about this in in one of your podcasts but how you you organize yourself how you do how you're going to keep your tasks your notes how do you do that because you do a lot people might not know this but you do a lot so i, I would like to understand how you mm -hmm how you would deal with all that. Yeah, it's a challenge sometimes. I do sleep. I do try to <laughs> have the best, you know, the best I can in terms of, you know, taking time away from the computer. Um, but I do work a lot because it's, you know, I don't know, it's something I'm passionate about. Uh -huh. um, I, I could always, I could always take a, you know, a little more time off, but I try to, like, I, I just came back from New Orleans Uh, a little vacation uh -huh. slash conference and meeting up with slash with, work <laughs> slash work yeah <laughs> and i and i tried to i i you know having that those kind of breaks even just for a few days to sort of reset and get re-inspired is really helpful so yeah i'm not i'm not working 24 hours a day that's not mm -hmm. sustainable i'm too i'm too old for that now <laughs> i can't i can't do that um but in terms of staying organized i want to I've settled into this sort of, and some people don't like that I do it this way, <laughs> but I don't have like a, a task list anymore. Mm -hmm. That's like all the things I'm working on. Mm -hmm. um, I used to do that. I would have, you know, I'd use, you know, different software to keep track of things, OmniFocus or an outliner or, you know, a to-do list or, you know, I, I've tried all sorts of different things or a bug system, feature requests, database. And what I've settled on is I have some kind of short lists of things. Um, and then also every week at the beginning of the week, I make a short list of like things that I want to work on. Like here are my priorities. Uh, and it might just be, might just be a few things like launch this feature or ship this new version of the iPhone app that we've been working on. And, is and that then paper? I, uh, it's not, no, it's, it's, uh, it's That's digital. Awful. Yeah, okay. um, I used to do more notes uh, and in paper and like have a notebook. I don't really do that much anymore, mostly because I'm trying to keep my desk uh, clean and <laughs> as paper everywhere. But and so I just kind of go where the wind takes me sometimes. Like I, I see, I I have the big kind of vision for the product, which I can judge everything against. Um, I have principles, things I believe in that that, that drive it. But then I listen to people and sometimes I'm inspired to just go off and work on something different. And I try to take advantage of that because the, you know, no one, I don't know, no one wants to work on something that's just a chore that they don't, you know, mm -hmm. enjoy. So like if, if something is, uh, I'm hearing from people, they want this thing and I have an idea for how this thing could be done and I'm kind of inspired, I just shift gears and I work on that. Um, okay. because I find that that's the best way to, to just get something kind of significant done. Um, and then of course, every day I'm also making time to answer emails, to fix bugs and, you know, things like that. So I, I don't know if that answers your question exactly. I just, yeah, it, I, it's I think not it a, does. yeah, I, I, I don't do have a kind of the yeah. same. I do kind of yeah. the same. <laughs> I, I think that the idea that you have to be happy doing what you do mm -hmm. means that you, can choose among the tasks or the, yeah. the to do's that you have, the ones that you that you, you you feel are more enjoyable or, and of course we all have to pay bills, so sometimes <laughs> we have to do things that we yeah. don't like. But I, I I I do kind of the same. I was just trying to understand uh, uh, because mm -hmm. you talked about that. And and what about ideas? You have a different notebook or a different space for the future, or some ideas or things that you you, you just keep a log of that, a, a giant list. Yeah, I have. I just have a big notes, like uh, lots of little notes. I see. Um, and I currently I do it all just on a computer. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of little notes where I, every time I have a idea or you know something, I'll make a note that has. You know, they're just a little outline of what it is or some brainstorming just so I can go back and remember. What, that's what why you is. created the yeah. micro dot blog notes feature, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Um, before I had the micro dot blog notes, uh, I used Ulysses um, with just lots. And I have like thousands of these little note files. Uh -huh. uh, it's just marked down and they, they sync. And yeah, I've, I've moved over to using micro dot blog notes. I like having integrated because then I can, 
um, I can share them or I can make it a blog post. And um, but yeah, the notes is a good example. I think of like, you know, did micro.blog need a notes feature? Not really, mm -hmm. but there are some advantages to uh, there are some things that enables like um, they, they can be treated kind of like private blog posts that mm -hmm. you share with people. Um, and we didn't have a concept of private blog posts, so we wanted something like that. Um, that was a big feature. It took months to do, but it was it did happen in the same way that a lot of features happen, where it was something I thought was important. I thought we could have a unique take on it, and I was inspired to like work a bunch on it. Um, I, so I worked a bunch on sense. it, and yeah, yeah. I, I I don't agree with you there. I think it makes sense. I think it yeah it, because it's kind of a draft, and and if you dr yeah, if you're drafting draft, yeah. on a blog. It's a little messy. Mm -hmm. uh, I I use yep. a, one uh, one of the plugins, so I, I I write my drafts on Obsidian, so I don't I don't mm -hmm. need that feature. But I can see a right. lot of value on that because a lot of people will not do what I did, install a mm -hmm. plugin and and mm -hmm. all these crazy things. And <laughs> if you have that draft uh, drafts, yeah, air, air quotes here. Mm -hmm. It's nice to just write down ideas that can become a. a, a I I think it makes total sense. I, yeah. I think. Okay. I, good. I think, I'm glad to hear that. I think. Thank you. Although I don't yeah, use I mean, it. I mean, me too. <laughs> me too. <laughs> although I don't yeah. use it, I think it makes total yeah. sense. I think it's a great feature for for people for a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, we don't. I don't think a lot of people use it yet, but it will be the foundation for new things. Like it, it it's sort. Of, it's one of the rare features that comes along not very often, but maybe every couple of years where we can start building new things on it. Uh -huh. um, and so you can imagine notes in different places like bookmarks and, you know, like, uh, yeah, there's a lot we can do with that. Um, but that that's the kind of, yeah, and like when I said, it, like, I want to work on things that are fun. It, what I really mean is like things that are important right now. Like what, what can I be inspired by? Like what am I hearing from people? Like mm -hmm. what actually matters right now? I don't want to get caught up in something that was important like four months ago, I, you know, okay. so I, so I feel like my priorities are always shifting a little bit. Like it's, it, and, and I, that's just how I work. I don't know. That's just, mm -hmm. it works for yeah, me. Yeah, that, that, that's a good approach because when you work on a different thing, I, I call this containers of information. Some people call them project. I prefer the, the idea of a, I have a container, a box, a space where mm -hmm. everything is on, about that idea that content or that project so i call them containers and when i move to another one i i i'm not thinking about that first one mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. my brain is still thinking mm -hmm. it's not actively i'm not actively thinking of it but the click moments they they come when we do this when we shift to another project so shifting mm -hmm. is a good idea but we have to have a, a place to keep everything that when we come back we know that everything is there we are comfortable okay i can return to this i can mm -hmm. start working on this so having this space is uh, free us to shift mm -hmm. we rest a little bit and we mm -hmm. can have those click moments and then mm. oh this is a good idea and you will only have those click moments if you stop thinking about that and move to a to a, to mm -hmm. a different to a different ah, project. Interesting. Yeah, yeah it, very interesting. It's, it's yeah, pretty like cool. That. Yeah, that's why I think of it as as con like like shipping containers because they're huge and I can put a lot of <laughs> things there, <laughs> and yeah. I can move them around, <laughs> can move them around the world and keep them with me. So I I, I think that mm -hmm. idea of shifting is a good. It's it's a kind of a. a, a Age, agile approach so it, mm -hmm. it's it's more what's more useful what's more important to do now instead of i'm gonna follow this list that mm -hmm. i created a week ago or a month ago mm -hmm. instead of the, yeah, yeah but I, I, and I, also I, it, things change i mean it, that's a good I, point. if i yeah. and and i know like i know when i hear from people like what's important like if i keep hearing the same thing over and over again like this doesn't work well or this needs to be better like then I work on that, you know, like that. It's just like having great feedback from people really, really, really helps. Um, Cause I mean, I use everything in micro.blog, but maybe I don't use it exactly the same way. Like I don't use obsidian. I've tried, I mean, I, it looks really great. and I know a lot of people love it. So if I'm hearing from obsidian users that like maybe the API could support something different or, you know, it's just really, really, mm -hmm. I, I like that feedback loop of like hearing what's important and then, yeah, shifting a little bit to work on that stuff. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. I, I, I loved it. Where could pe can people find you? Um, my blog is manton.org. 
and I mean, that's the best place to go. Just everything's those, there. <laughs> everything's there, but you know, micro.blog obviously is the the big thing we're talking about today. And yeah, it was great. Great. Thanks for having me. It was Thank you. Great discussion. It Thank was you. Great. I love it.